It's another beautiful day here at Lake Mead. Join me while we take a tour of the Dive Extras Black Tip Scooter. I'm Russ with Mission Scuba and welcome back. And today we're out here at Boulder Beach at Lake Mead to talk about the Dive Extras Black Tip Scooter. And man, this thing is amazing. And I've had mine a year now. I got it last March, so March of 2021. And I put about 45 dives on it. So I feel like I'm in a position where I can kind of talk about the things I like and some of the tweaks I've done on it. And I'm not just talking about it like someone who's only had it a week or two. So I've had it a while. I have some experience with it. So here we go. The Dive Extras, they have three different models. Um, all take the same types of batteries, but they have their Black Tip Travel, which is the shortest tube, takes two batteries. The Black Tip Tech, which is this one, this one also takes two batteries. And then they have the Black Tip Exploration, which is their longest tube, and that one takes four batteries. And I was very tempted to get that one because I really wanted that extra runtime of the four batteries, but I wanted something more portable, so I chose to do the Black Tip Tech. So here we go. Uh, the batteries, big daddies. DeWalt is the battery choice that I went with because I'm very familiar with DeWalt. That's what all my power tools are, so I wasn't willing to get anything but DeWalt batteries. At the time, the 12 amp hour battery was the biggest one I could get, so that's the one I did. I paid roughly $329 each for each of these batteries. I think they've since gone up some because of the COVID shortages. Um, and I actually saw on Amazon the other day that they now have a 15 amp hour battery I don't know if that's compatible with the Dive Extra scooters yet, but I would imagine so, but you'd have to check on their website to see what they say, but that'd be pretty great. Um, the 15 amp hours would give you a good 15 to 20 minutes more runtime, so that would be a pretty great thing. Uh, I'll also compare this one to my normal power tool battery. So this is the one I use in all my power tools. Look at the difference in size, Mer, huge. So this one gives me plenty of runtime for my power tools, and we even have a small battery, battery powered vacuum on the boat, and it also takes this small one, and it runs and runs and runs, never runs out. So the fact that the scooters take these big boys, man, these things take a lot of power. Additionally, this is the charger I use for my normal power tool batteries. Little one, normal one, never have problems with these. And they did say this charger was compatible with the bigger batteries, but I didn't want to take the chance of ruining some pretty expensive batteries, so I opted to get a pretty heavy duty DeWalt charger. This one's quite a bit louder, quite a bit beefier. It has a fan inside of it, so it's trying to keep cool, but it's great. At least now I know I'm charging my batteries properly and not compromising anything, but it's been great, love it. I run my scooter at pretty much a four speed all the time when I'm cruising. So you can, you know, you can go up from speed one, which is the slowest all the way to speed seven, I think it is. Anyway, I'm usually cruising at a four, and that gives me about 75 minutes of runtime. Um, no normally my dives are an hour and 30 to hour and 45 minutes, but I'm not running the scooter that whole time. Usually I'll get where I'm going, I'll take my scooter off, swim around some, come back and get the scooter. But I have done some dives where I've run it the whole time at speed four, and it's about 75 minutes. So that gives you an idea of your runtime with this thing. It's been pretty great. Uh, let's talk some about the gauges. When I first bought my scooter, I wanted a depth gauge and a compass on it, of course. So I opted for an old school analog gauge, depth gauge, and a Sunto compass that was mounted on here. This is a piece of ABS plastic. I put a ram mount, fastened that to the tail, and had a small little arm so I could kind of move it around wherever it wanted to be. But what I found was my eyes kept going down to look at my gauges, and they, they would go off from where I was going. So I'd be looking ahead, looking ahead, making sure I'm following the right path look at my gauges, look back up, and I'd kind of be out of whack. So I opted to put my gauges more forward so my eyes were never off where I was headed, and it's been wonderful. So I would highly recommend moving your stuff to here where it's always in your line of sight and you're not like looking down all the time and taking your eyes off what you're traveling. Uh, so originally this was fastened straight to the tail, just kind of siliconed in those holes. These are mounted on ram mounts, so you can move them around. Everything's movable. Ram mounts, you can do either aluminum or plastic or whatever, and it's all great. The Sunto Compass is the one I've always dived with, so that's the one I wanted to go with. I also switched to a true computer as opposed to an analog gauge, because uh, I wanted to know my exact depth, and it's nice to not have to look at my wrist while I'm scootering. So this one gives me my, my, my exact depths, and I love it. 
would not switch back. A little bit sucky to bite the bullet and have to spend 800 bucks on a dive computer, but once you spend that money, it's like, okay, I love it. So let's talk about the weighting of the scooter. I've added stuff, I've removed stuff, I've put all kinds of things on, taken all kinds of things off, so I've always been changing the weight of the scooter and changing out the ballast inside as well. I removed my saltwater plate immediately when I got the scooter because I only dive in fresh water. And I, like I said, I've added weight, removed weight, I've played with it where it is in here to give it the proper weight that I like. Um, currently, I have my battery sitting directly on the bottom and I'll open it up so you can take a look. The Dive Extras recommends putting everything at the nine o'clock position so that it counteracts the torque of the scooter when you're throttling up. And I do have some of the weight at that position, but for the most of it is at the bottom because I like it when I take my scooter off and I drop it on the bottom, that it stays upright. It keeps the lights level, keeps my cameras going. So that works best for me. I found if it was in the nine o'clock position, the scooter would tilt on the bottom. So for me, it's a little bit better having the bulk of the weight on the bottom of the scooter and then some of it at the nine o'clock position to counteract the torque. But it's really all up to you and I haven't noticed it makes that big of a deal, especially when you're only at speed of four. There's not that much torque, so it's not a big deal. One small problem I've experienced with my scooter is silt. Um, out here at Lake Mead, silt is extremely fine and there is a lot of it and you're all over the bottom and so a lot of times, like I said, I'll detach my scooter, I'll stick it on the bottom, swim off, come back from my scooter and <clears throat> what I found was my throttle was sticking in. So you have to double click it to start it so I'd find that I had to use two hands, click, click, like I had to use two hands, like one to push it in, one to take it back out. So click, click to start it because the silt would keep the throttle in. So when I'd get my scooter home that day, clean it out really good with water and compressed air and it'd be perfect again. But then the next time diving, same thing would happen again. So finally, and actually at one point I started carrying a toothbrush with me in my pocket and I would try to clean it out with a toothbrush, but that wouldn't help because I decided the silt was in here where the throttle button is. So what I did is I looked on Dive Extra's website. They show you how to disassemble the throttle assembly. So I did that, kind of looked around and figured out that I could put a hole here and it would help the silt flow out. Keep some water going through it and keep the silt coming out. And it's about a 16th inch hole. Take a little picture here. But basically did that. Once the throttle's out, the, once the button's out, you can kind of see where the hole should be and where to do it perfectly. And I'll put a little picture on there for you. But it's been great. I haven't had that throttle problem since then and it's been about six months now. And I don't know if it's coincidence or not or whether it really works or really doesn't work, who knows. But the fact of the matter is, I haven't had that problem since, so I'm chalking it up as drilling that little hole in there. And I don't believe I've compromised the scooter in any way. Not necessarily recommending you do that, but it worked for me and it's been great. When I first got my scooter a year ago, uh, I couldn't wait to take it out and the launch ramps were closed at the time. That's when Lake Mead, the water levels were really shifting and the launch ramps were closed. So I came down here to shore dive and usually in this area, shore diving sucks because it's a half mile out of just flat, 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 and there's just not really any good visibility. So I fired up the scooter, brought it down here, and man, I had a blast that day. The sucky part was I got about three quarters of a mile offshore, scooter dies. Nothing, put, put, doing the trigger, not seeing anything on the display, nothing, nothing, nothing. Started swimming back, swimming, swimming, swimming. About 45 minutes later, I'm finally in about 15 feet of water and the scooter lets me start it up again. So I contacted Dive Extra's tech support and they were saying they thought maybe I was running it too hard because I was up at a speed six and seven that whole time. It was brand new, I was kind of dragging myself along. And so I said, okay, I'll try it again. So the next day, we, or the next week we were out on the boat that time, buzzing around the boat and same thing, scooter dies. The scooter starts up again, scooter dies. It's like, well, this is crappy. So I contacted Dive Extra's tech support again and they said, okay, something's definitely wrong. Send us a tail unit. So I sent them just the tail unit and 10 days later, I got a brand new tail unit and they said it looked like a manufacturing defect, like a wire shortage. And they apologized and sent me a brand new tail. So kudos to Dive, Dive Extras for handling that warranty so quickly. It was amazing. But since then, never, ever, ever a problem. So all in all, it's been amazing having this scooter. I love it. It's been the most amazing tool I've had since all these years diving. It's been just great having it and I love it. So if you're in any way considering buying a black tip scooter, I would say go for it. Bite the bullet and just buy it. It's been great. 
If you like these videos, you like what you see, join the Mission Scuba family and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And most of all, dive safe. Thank you.